What's going on, guys? Thanks for tuning in to the app. Yes, app for a little, it's kind of like a cleanup session. We did our episode on Easter. We did our midweek episode, and we kind of said, we didn't talk about Michael King enough and the important role he has on the team right now and he can have moving forward. Jake, you had some numbers. Jim. That you'll share with the people. BBD, everyone in the app. What's going on, people? Thanks for coming to join us here. And yeah, you know, let's be honest. It wasn't the most exciting week in Yankee land. We normally see the birds on the schedule and we think dubs. Uh, that's not exactly what played out in Camden Yards. What did play out and continues to be a highlight early on in the season is our guy, my king, my king, uh, Michael King. Yankee fans are familiar with him at this point, parts of 2019, 2020, 2022, uh, 2021 as well. That's another year in there. I guess I could have just attached all of them. Uh, he was a quick riser through the system, Boston College kid. We had him on our show, Talking Yanks. Go check that out when you get a chance. And he was awesome. He almost said too much. We're like, dude, hey, like reel it in. Um, and one of the things he said is that he learned a clue ball, the Corey Kluber curveball slider that he didn't like to label. Uh, and we saw that develop last year. And the other thing that's been developing is Mike King out of the bullpen. He's pumping heaters. The fastball's got to tick up. And he has looked gross to start this young season. And he could be a massive swing piece for the bullpen or just the future of bullpens, multi-inning guys out of the pen. I think his eyes will still probably be to starting and maybe he can go there, but... The arsenal he's using right now, which is mostly the sinker, the two-seam fastball, which I've always loved. It's like a little, like, slingshot pitch. You show it to any baseball fan, and you're like, yes. That's fun. And then he's breaking off that clue ball. Now, a lot of the Yankees are using what they're calling the whirly, but his is a little different. Really cool. I tweeted out the images last year because they said it, that him and Kluber have, like, the same delivery, and I posted the side-by-side. They do, and Kluber picked up on that. And told him, hey, you have the same like release point and motion as me. Try this grip and this, whatever the cues were. And that's where he learned the clue ball while he was hurt last year. So it's been a good pitch. I just like that he comes and pounds his own. And I like, this is why I am not, I don't go gaga over strikeouts. Because I actually right. like pitchers who are like, no, I just, throw strikes and get you out on the ground or in the air. A ground ball to shortstop on the first pitch is mu- is, uh, is, is more of a win than a strike. Much more of a win. And that's kind of what Kinger does. And when they brought him into the bases loaded situation uh, a couple weeks ago or last week or whenever you're watching this against the Blue Jays, I tweeted out double play is going to come because he just puts, he gets guys to put the ball on the ground. It's uh, a big tool and it allows him to eat up innings. Like you can't have... Uh, an innings eater if they don't pitch the contact, really, especially out of the bullpen where you're just trying to do that. Like, Sessa, they tried, but he's a strikeout guy, really. He's like that slider pitch, which is swing and miss. Kinger goes for that. That being said, his pitches are starting to get, like, nastier and nastier. His fastball ticked up. Yeah, Jim, you know I'm a pretty basic cat. Uh, In 2020, Mike King's average fastball, 93 miles per hour. 2021, 94. This year, it's at 95. So we're going up one mile per hour every year. I like that. And then, yes, it all ties back to the slider, curveball, whatever you want to label it. Baseball savant so far this year, uh, they're labeling it a curveball. Um, and it's an 82-mile-per-hour curveball, which, whoa, <laughs> modern baseball is getting pretty gross. Um, but I think that's important because we talk about variance in pitch speed, and sometimes you'll see it where a guy... If their pitches are too close together in speed, hitters can just sit back and kind of wait on that. Um, And then you can look for one pitch, and if you really need to, you follow off that other pitch. But you're looking at that same timing mechanism. With the curveball being 82, um, I really think that is so disruptive for the hitters because the fastball is 95, the curveball is 82, and the changeup, Mike King's changeup, is 88 miles per hour, which... uh, Again, if those were Mike King's only two pitches, I don't know if there's enough speed gap in there to trick hitters, but with the third pitch, and this is probably why at some point he should be barking to get a chance in the rotation, he has three pitches. Have you seen, now he's only thrown 16 changeups. He hasn't pitched a lot this year, but the swing and miss on his changeup is 60%. 
And uh, I think that's pretty wild. I'm going to pull up some videos. I don't know if we can put them on the app to be completely honest with you, but I'll show you, Jake. Sure. And, uh, so you can see them. And Jim, I, I, hey, I know we're starting to dream about our guy in the rotation, which is pretty cool stuff. But uh, the changeup, and, you know, this is kind of normal stuff. Uh, the changeup should be a lefty neutralizer for King. Uh, Yankee fans remember Tommy Canely and how disgusting he was against lefties with that gross changeup. If that changeup can be his lefty out pitch and that slider can be his righty out pitch, I mean, you got you got all the fixings right there. Looks like your Easter spread all over again. He's thrown the changeup 16 times, 10 to lefties, 6 to righties. He's generated swing and miss to righties, and it's a cool change. It's not a Tommy Canely changeup. It's no. not going to have that sharp break. It's kind of more... Like the deception, not the break, is what does it. Right. You know, sometimes people can throw changeups, and even if you're sitting changeup, it's so so much movement on it. Right. This is a deception pitch because it's it's just it's very similar to the two seamer, but it's just yeah. slower. No, and that's uh, Jim. You'll remember some old talking Yanks. I originally thought the changeup would be the pitch that would unlock Michael King because of his arm action, because his two seamer has so much run. That changeup. In theory, I thought would have that much run. You're right. I don't think the run is crazy, but I still think coming off of his power fastball, it can be a wipeout pitch for him too, along with the clue ball. I mean, it's all there. It's there. And did you give your stat about the innings and Seve and Monty and stuff? Because that's the good stuff. So, uh, our Yankees, we know they came into with the short spring training. They didn't fully stretch out their starting pitchers, which we hope pays off down the line. Um, you know, most Yankee starters were in the 60s for their first start. And then that second start, they got to 70s, 80s. And and hopefully starting this week, they'll be in the in the 90, approaching 100 range. Mike King is a massive part of that. Mike King, in his four appearances this year, he's thrown 7.2 innings. Severino, in two starts, 8 flat. Monty, 8.1. So, Mike King, over these first, what are we at, two weeks into the season, he has done essentially the same workload as Severino and Montgomery. So, that's that's definitely something to track as the years go, as the year goes on. Who's eating those innings? Um, and again, Michael King, is he staying in a multi-inning relief role? If he continues to perform, is there going to be a time this year where we need or want to stretch him out? I don't know, but right now, he is... He's eating innings like a starting pitcher for the Yankees currently is. I think that's eye-opening that he has that many innings already. And it's uh, it's a huge role because we've seen that this iteration of the Yankees don't blow teams out. They are in close games nonstop. And the bullpen gets gassed and used. And we lost King halfway through the season last year after he had, what, six shutout innings from the as a, from a relief pitcher. It was like the best it relief pitcher like ever. looked like he was breaking out. And then he got injured, and then he came back. So hopefully he sticks around uh, and eats up these innings in this role and gives because if you can get a guy that we trust, like I trust him in right. a close game. I trust him to put the ball in play, have the defense work for him, throw some nasty pitches. I think he'll generate strikeouts as well with his new arsenal. Um, that's a big role. My king, my king. My king, my king. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested because the the other side of that equation, I know we've talked about, you know, my king has a history of being a starting pitcher and he was stretched out. Um, you know, our our guy Johnny Laza, who, who broke out out of the bullpen, remember how quickly he began to earn trust as, as he was good in 2021? Mike King could be on a similar path that way. Mike King could be so good out of the bullpen that he can almost take himself out of starting pitching conversations, which... Um, I mean, hey, let's look back at the past couple years. Chad Green. Chad Green. Johnny. Like, those roles, that multi-inning, two-inning reliever. And I think, you know, Johnny Laza was being used as a starting pitcher. They they cut back on that. Chad had been kind of cut out of that role uh, up, in, up until that point. Mike King, through last year, was training to be a starting pitcher. So... Yeah, that's it's gonna be funky. I mean, for him, if he continues to be this good, he's gonna be pitching in eighth innings, <laughs> uh, trying to finish a game uh, when the bullpen's tired. So that that dynamic, if Mike King continues to be good, which way do the Yankees push him? Do they try to stretch him out, or do they get him in more high leverage spots? The first injury in the rotation is King right now the guy. Would they give him starts? 
Clark Schmidt, uh, in his outings, he looked fairly solid this year. Good call. And he doesn't, as of right now, he hasn't performed like King has that he would play his way into higher leverage bullpen innings. He can if he continues to pitch really well. But he's more stretched out currently that if they needed a spot start, it's probably Clark Schmidt right now. I think after Clark, um, you'd really have to consider King because right now Davey's still figuring it out. Um, Luis Hill is also stretched out, so I don't know. I mean, Kinger, Kinger could be pegged for the pen. If it's a true spot start, I think it's it's King. It, like if they, if it's like a, a one week injury, I think they give the ball to King. Like one start, like yeah, like 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 if it's like a schedule break, yeah, type thing. We're like, oh, well, this guy needs a day, a day, and there's too many games. Like a like a a double header comes up. Yeah, and be like, oh, it's King. King and Clark split this Clark game, and, and King, King even, yeah, and yeah. Keep, but they probably keep King coming out of the bullpen because it's been working. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to watch. Mm-hmm. So hey, you know the Yankees pitching itself has been a bright spot this whole season. Mike King has been one of the brightest spots of this Yankee, and it's going to be fun to see where he lands this year. My King, Mike King, nice guy. He is a nice guy. Like some of our Instagram posts. Pay so. attention to his uh, walk-up music. His sister wrote a yeah. song specifically for him called like, King of the Hill, right? That's pretty cool. It is cool. I, I've got a sister. She hasn't ruined me ever walking song. Oh, she painted you pictures, though. Yeah. Thanks, guys. See you later.